Hey everyone, this is Nick and this is the laptop with the biggest battery life from all the Linux devices that I ever reviewed. It can even give some newer Macs a run for their money. It's the Tuxedo Pulse 15 and it's basically the bigger cousin of laptops I already reviewed like the KDE Slimbook or the Slimbook Pro X14. So let's take a look at what it can do apart from lasting a long time. And speaking of lasting a long time, how about you make your own Python apps live a little bit longer thanks to today's sponsor. Thanks to Tuxcare for sponsoring this video. If you've ever worked on a project using Python, you know how frustrating it is to discover that the version you're using is going end of life and you're gonna have to speed through and hurry up to refactor and rewrite a bunch of code. Well, Tuxcare can now help you plan that transition thanks to their Python extended lifecycle support. With that new service, you can keep your existing code base and still receive security updates and patches to Python, even if that version is no longer officially supported. This means that if your code base is still working for you, you can still have it meet your security requirements and you can plan the transition to the new version of Python with a bit more peace of mind. So you can learn more about Tuxcare's Python extended lifecycle support by clicking on the link in the description below. Okay, since this is the main title of the video, let's begin with battery life. This device is 15 inch and has room to spare inside, which it filled with a 91 watt hour battery. It also uses a low TDP Ryzen 7 5700U with 8 cores and 16 threads, and it powers a 1440p screen which goes up to 165Hz. And with all of that, this laptop manages to have stellar battery life. Tuxedo rates it for 18 hours on idle at minimum screen brightness, but in more real life scenarios, it's still pretty damn impressive. Playing YouTube videos in a loop on the default performance mode at 50% brightness over Wi Fi and the display running at 165 Hz, it lasted for 10 hours. While reducing the refresh rate to 40 Hz instead, it managed to last for 12 and a half hours in total. That's actually pretty weird. The display is either 165Hz or 40Hz. No 60Hz option. I don't really know why. But what I know is that when using it for office work, like writing things, creating documents, 40Hz is virtually indistinguishable from 60Hz. But when you're trying to watch a video or game, you're gonna want the display at 165, not at 40. On more real-life activities like writing documents, watching the occasional video, listening to music and browsing the web at 165Hz and 50% brightness, the Pulse 15 lasted for 12 hours. And when I put it in power save mode with the display at 40Hz and all the same activities, it lasted for 14 hours. And this is all pretty darn impressive. It's more than all day battery life, it's overnight battery life and sometimes even two days of battery life without having to charge, which is really cool. It's basically a device you can scale, either using a lot of power for doing intensive tasks and you'll still get all day battery life, or just you want to scale it back to make it last as long as you can, and you can do that. Now, speaking of performance, the Ryzen 7 5700U is a very good option. It works using 35 watts of power, and on Geekbench, it gets 1254 in single score, and 8113 in multi-core. It's a powerful CPU more than enough to do any simple or complex task. The graphical part is the integrated RX Vega 8 with 8 graphical cores running at 1900 MHz. It's good enough for providing some GPU acceleration to applications and to play indie titles. But AAA titles won't really be an option. Shadow of the Tomb Raider only runs well at 720p low details. Anything above that will net you sub 30 frame rate. Basically, it's not meant for gaming at all, but you'll still be able to play indie titles or older games just fine. Just don't expect to play The Witcher 3 on Ultra on this thing. Okay, but apart from this great battery life and good performance, is it a good laptop? Well, the build quality is excellent. It's a bigger version of the 14 inch chassis used in a lot of Linux laptops, but in the usual tuxedo black. It's made of a magnesium and aluminium alloy that doesn't attract fingerprints and is pretty durable, as I can attest to. I've daily driven a Slimbook Pro X14 for two years, which uses the same alloy for the chassis. There are basically no marks on it, nowhere on the palm rests, and just two scratches that I made when carrying it around daily in a bag. It's also a very lightweight laptop at 1.5 kilograms, 
And for once, the power brake isn't huge either, so you can carry that thing around in your bag without breaking your back. And I must say, this chassis looks really cool in black. Like the magnesium aluminium alloy always looked kinda weird in silver, in between metal and plastic, but in black it is super stylish. Tuxedo also usually goes pretty soft on the branding with just a tuxedo logo on the lid of the laptop in glossy black so it's not extremely visible and you have none of these stupid stickers and no branding on the bezels. Speaking of, these bezels are pretty slim here which is nice and the hinge feels really solid and you can open it with one finger. The chassis has very minimal deck flex on the palm rests and the keyboard and the only part that felt a little flimsy was the middle of the bottom bezel when opened, but that's not a part that will ever see any mechanical force applied to it in real life, so I don't think it's a concern. You can also open the laptop to upgrade the RAM and the SSD. The RAM is dual channel and the SSD slots are M.2. Once you open the laptop, you can see it has dual fans, which is probably overkill for this CPU, but also means that the laptop never gets hot. Even when playing a game, it never went above 65 to 68 degrees Celsius, and it stayed at 40 degrees at idle. So, it's a very nicely built laptop. It's lightweight, it's sturdy, it looks really good, and it's upgradable. In terms of I.O., we have a good selection of ports. On the left, you have a Kensington lock, a pop-up gigabit Ethernet jack, a USB 2.0 port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, an audio jack, and a micro SD card reader. On the right, you have the barrel charger, an HDMI 2.0 port, another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and a USB-C port that does DisplayPort 1.4 and power delivery, although the CPU will only run at 25 watts when charging through this port. You also get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. And yes, I would have liked to see a second USB-C port instead of the USB 2 port, because it doesn't really make sense to have these older ports nowadays, but yeah, they're there. Now, the keyboard is still excellent. I loved it on my own Slimbook Pro X14 and on the KDE Slimbook I reviewed recently, and I still think it's fantastic now. The keys are nice and big, super stable, you can get a correct press even from the very sides, the font is legible, and the black keyboard makes the backlight nice and readable. It has a tux super key, full-size arrow keys, and a row for page up and down, home and end. It doesn't have a numpad, but with this key size, they couldn't really have fitted it in here anyways. I like numpads, I use them all the time on the laptops that have them, but I know a lot of you don't, so yeah, there's none here. Typing on this thing feels really good. The key travel is long enough, it's precise, it's a good keyboard. The touchpad though is disappointing. It's not glass, but it's precise enough and it works well with gestures. It is, however, not centered, which doesn't make sense if you don't have a numpad as the whole keyboard is centered. So this touchpad is a bit small, it could have been expanded a little bit and it should have been centered as well. On the 14 inch model, this touchpad is very stable and very firm, but on the 15 inch it rattled a bit and I could feel it when dragging my finger around or when clicking. It didn't feel great to use, the click sounds flimsy. It just doesn't feel like it's up to 2022 standards. It might just have been an issue with my specific review unit, but yeah, I can't say otherwise. The touchpad was just not good. Now, the display is 15.6 inches, 16 by 9, and it runs at 2560 by 1440. It covers 95% of sRGB, it has a contrast ratio of 800 to 1, and it gets relatively bright at 350 nits. It has an anti-glare coating and the viewing angles are pretty great. It's surrounded by relatively small bezels, apart from the bottom one, but that's not much of an issue on a 15-inch laptop, you don't really notice it. The panel runs at 165Hz, and as I've said before, you can drop it down to 40Hz to save some battery life. It's a good display. It's not the best I've seen, it's not the brightest I've seen, but it's really more than good enough, and it's going to be very usable outside thanks to the anti-glare coating as well. Now, the webcam is hosted on the top bezel, and it's only 720p. It's not atrocious though, it's a bit grainy and you'll have to light yourself correctly, but it will at least make you look like a normal human being. The microphone isn't terrible though, it's no studio mic and you'll get better results with any USB microphone, but it's decent. It doesn't sound too muffled, it doesn't pick up on coil wine, and while you can hear the touchpad clicks and the key presses, well, it doesn't erase your voice, so it's honestly not that bad. 
As per the speakers, they're also pretty good. There's a good amount of bass, no distortion even at max volume, and they don't sound tinny. They are bottom firing though, so if you place the laptop on a soft surface, like a couch or a bed, you might muffle them a bit. So for once, I can't really complain about the webcam, mic and speakers. They're decent, they're not the best I've seen, they're not studio grade, but they're really good enough for such a laptop. And that pains me to say so, because I'm French and us French people really like to complain about the same things over and over again. Now, how can you configure the laptop? Well, the CPU and GPU are fixed, as is the display, there are no options there. The base model comes with 8GB of RAM and 250GB of SSD. You can upgrade that to 16, 32 or 64GB of RAM, although you'll probably want to upgrade that yourself to ensure you get the best prices. And the SSD can go up to 4TB of PCIe 4 storage, so it can be pretty darn fast. You have a ton of keyboard layouts available, including your own custom ones. You can get it without Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if you want. Although it does seem like a really weird option to have on the laptop, like why wouldn't you want Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? It also comes with two years of warranty and you can add up to five years, as well as adding your own custom logo instead of the Tuxedo one that is on the lid. And so here we are, the Pulse 15 is a good laptop. It's stylish, lightweight, sturdy, powerful and can last for a long, long time. It has a decent webcam, good speakers and an okay mic array. The keyboard is excellent, the I.O. is good, although I would have liked an extra USB-C port just for future proofing, and the build quality is great. It really is just let down by the touchpad. It's precise enough and smooth enough, but it doesn't feel weighty enough, and it rattles a bit, although this might just have been an issue with my review unit. What you'll really want this laptop for, though, is the battery life. It lasts for a very, very long time compared to most Windows laptops or even other Linux devices. And that's with the display at 165Hz. You can also scale back the performance with extreme power safe profiles and switching the display to a lower refresh rate. And 40Hz on paper might seem unacceptable, but when you're browsing the web or writing a document, it's perfectly fine. It's no dynamic refresh rate screen, which would be a lot better, but it's an option to make your laptop last as long as possible. It starts at 1159 euros for 8 gigabytes of RAM and 250 gigabytes of SSD. And at that price, I wish it had 16 gigabytes of RAM at least. But if you want a very long lasting battery life and you want to support Linux's development, then I think it's a good option. Now, Tuxedo is a sponsor of the channel, but they didn't get to see this review before I published it and they didn't get to tell me what I could say in it, so this is just my honest opinion about it. But if this laptop doesn't really suit your needs, they also have another whole range of devices, from Ultrabooks, Nux, gaming laptops, gaming towers, you can pick basically whatever you want, with a variety of configuration options for CPUs, GPUs, SSDs, RAM, even optical Blu-ray drives on towers and your logo on the lid of the laptop as well. They have all keyboard layouts, as I said, even custom ones, and they have devices for basically all prices. So if you need a new device and the Pulse 15 isn't for you, still check their website. They might have something that really fits the bill. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast on Mondays and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover for the month that comes after. And you can also just donate using the super thanks button or the PayPal link in the description. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!